ladies and gentlemen hey yo fellas 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 welcome into the channel happy holidays and this is the week 16 final thoughts and because it is a holiday week and i'm traveling up north santa sal coming your way traveling up north to deliver the goodies to all the northeast people this holiday season I got to record this video earlier in the week, which of course with all this COVID shit happening, every second that I look over at my screen in the updating news, you get a Jared Goff and Travis Kelsey and all these players put on the list. So with the new COVID rules, it's, it's much more likely people can return. Now that is still not making it a guarantee, but it is much more likely from people earlier in the week to be able to return, especially with all the enhanced treatments and all that that they're going to be receiving. So with all that being said... Be patient throughout this video. I will be putting updates in via the editing as I have the video will release later in the week on Friday morning as you're seeing this. But of course, things are going to change as we are in some hectic times. But with that being said, let's transition right away on this 11-game slate. An 11-game slate that only features one game opening up a total above 48 because of all the COVID stuff, the injuries. It's just low totals right now. And that is the Rams and Vikings at a 49.5 point total on this 11-game slate. So for the quarterback position right away and early on, I mean, yeah, up top, you, you get four guys right away above $7,000. And they all look decent and they all have question marks, right? I mean, you have you have Mahomes at an expensive price tag who has been looking good in a really good matchup. Like the Steelers secondary is right now 26 in the NFL in coverage grading. Uh, but the problem there is, I mean, Travis Kelsey is on the COVID list. Does anybody else pop up on that list? And as I'm going through this, Tyree Kill is placed in the COVID list. We'll see if he's able Able to return in time their kickers place in the COVID list. they have now kelsey so mahomes is not looking anywhere near now as good as i once thought so it's a little bit now difficult if those guys actually miss for mahomes paired up with a pringle and these other dudes really difficult to take the top off to have reliable options it's not looking so good now for mr patrick mahomes they still have a 28 and a half implied total the highest one of the highest on the week right now i believe the highest right now so that's going to start to look good get josh allen against new england they're going to know how to limit him that's a game total of just 43 and a half points doesn't seem good. You get Tom Brady without Chris Godwin. He's done for the air ACL. Mike Evans is dealing with a hamstring week to week. That's a concern. They have a decent total of 26, but maybe they get Antonio Brown back, right? They're hoping to get him back. The rest of the receivers will be Tyler Johnson in the slot and a combo of Scotty Miller and, and Rashad Perriman on the outside. It becomes more difficult. But if you get Antonio Brown back, you at least have Gronk, Tyler Johnson, Antonio Brown for some sort of uh, ability there. But Fournette also a hamstring. So you have to track all that news. Laying an egg on Sunday Night Football, losing 9 nothing, getting shut out for the first time in ages since I was born, it seems like, from Tom Brady. I think it'll naturally lower their ownership there. There. Mahomes trending nicely. Same thing for Josh Allen. So I think Brady kind of leans into this way where the Tampa Bay stacks will probably, as the week goes on, I'm going to make him a yes right now, will probably become leverages as the week goes on. Nothing wrong with Herbert. They're nine point favorites. They have a great team total against Houston. The Houston secondary comes into this week ranking dead last, 32nd in the NFL, according to Pro Football Focus. The puffs, the puffs, the puffs out there, the 32nd in secondary grades. So that's going to bode well for Justin Herbert, who has been trending in the right direction for the last month, month and a half. So Herbert will stand out. So above $7,000, if you're looking for single stacks, Mahomes and Tyreek, assuming we're going to get a lot of, I mean, Austin Eckler on the COVID list, maybe he misses, a lot of these value running backs, if that opens up with Justin Jackson, and as the week goes on, even more value running backs like we saw open up last week. And yes, what I start to prioritize is where my stacks start to come in, especially if I see some lower ownership. So Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek is what I will prioritize, assuming we get the value. I do think you'll get some ownership discount on these Tom Brady stacks, just how it's lining up right now, and I'm fine to go to Gronk at 6K range. I'm definitely fine. I mean, the best play in the slate might be, and we'll see what the other news comes out. It might be Antonio Brown if Godwin and Evans were to miss. We already know Godwin is out. If Brown is actually eligible to rejoin the team, there's still somewhat of a question mark there. So I do think that Brady early on will lean to be my leverage up top. If you go to the 6K range, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear and obvious where the best plays in the 6K range are going to come from. I think it's going to come from this Rams and Minnesota game environment. I'm very curious to see what the ownership will come in here. I assume people are going to go to Matthew Stafford, a 26 team implied total, the 23 team implied total for Kirk Cousins as a slight underdog in this game. Rams secondary is a little bit better as they get people back. I mean, it's really good as they get people back from COVID to safety, Jalen Ramsey. They should be getting back Von Miller as well. If you ask me which side of this I like more, I mean, I, I think that it's really easy to stack up the Matthew Stafford side. We'll see where ownership comes in on this game. I think you'll probably get a little bit of leverage on Minnesota. They'll have a less chance of being in the optimal lineup and be like a four or 5% chance, depending on what their ownership comes in at. I expect Stafford to be one of the highest, if not the highest owned quarterback heading into the week. But that said, in an 11 game slate with a lot of stud 
quarterbacks, it might only hit 10%. I'm not really concerned about quarterback ownership all that much. Jalen Hurts is fine. Joe Burrow specifically stands out because of the matchup in that secondary that he's going to be facing in Baltimore and how bad that secondary is. I mean, they double team the shit out of Devontae Adams to somewhat hold him down, but that is still a just wrecked by injuries secondary where T Higgins, Jamar Chase Boyd should be able to take advantage of it. A great bounce back spot. Boyd had a good week last week, led the team with almost a hundred yards. He found the end zone, but I mean, a one, one catch, three yards, a performance from Jamar Chase, not much from T Higgins in that game. I think it's a really good bounce back spot. So pairing it up with Joe Burrow is not a bad idea, especially with Joe Mixon battling an ankle sprain, potentially missing this week. So six K range, it's Cousins and Stafford standing out the most. And then I probably lean to go to Joe Burrow. If I had to rank the quarterbacks I've talked about so far in terms of my interests, it'll depend on ownership later in the week, which you can see over on Patreon. We'll have the ownership and all the tools over there. Come on in, join the community. No better time than the holiday season right now. Get yourself your mother, your brother, your sister, a gift to the Patreon tiers right now. You want the two months free with the annual package? Get all up in there. But if early on, before we get finalized projections and ownership, if I had to rank where my interests are lying, I'm hoping to get some leverage on Tom Brady. That looks good. Those Patrick Mahomes single stacks also look good. And then this Stafford Cousins game environment is going to stand out. I think we get leverage on Cousins. I think we get leverage on Brady. I think we probably get a little bit of leverage on KC with this Travis Kelsey news, assuming Mahomes doesn't miss with COVID and also Joe Burrow. And by the way, as we finish out the five carry range at quarterback, if, if there's crazy news, which there's going to be as I'm recording this early in the week, I'm going to potentially come through with my iPhone and be like, have somebody record me and be like, here's the quick updates. This is what happened these past couple of days before I finalize this and release it on Friday morning, which is going to be Christmas Eve. So I'm not going to re-record the whole thing. We're here in the studio. We're going to get the base, the base of the production down right now. And when we need to slide some things in, if I, if I talk for hours about a certain player, well, I'm going to just cut it out and fit in and fit in. Here's the guy's replacement. Just stay away from this stack. Or here's the running back that stands out. Going to be highly owned. I could probably pivot away like James Robinson last week. I know he gets like 17 points, but it didn't cost you if he didn't play the dude at 40% fucking ownership. There's going to be somebody that week that I'm definitely going to probably pivot away from. We'll end up seeing who it is later in the week, especially on Patreon. To finish out the rest of the slate, if we get into this 5K range now, really below Joe Burrow, like Burrow stands out. If you keep going down, you're going to be seeing Justin Fields. He ends up playing on Tuesday. I'm recording this before that Tuesday game starts. So if he's injured, if something happens along those lines, of course, it's because it has not happened yet. And hopefully I end up taking this out. But I do like Justin Fields just because of the price tag. Like if you're looking for leverage and, and really a discount at the quarterback position, which I kind of hinted at earlier, I'm not looking for that. Like if a Tyler Huntley, the legend himself, if you follow the preseason, you know how dynamic and versatile and good that player is. Like last week, if a Tyler Huntley was to open up at lower ownership because there's some question marks around Lamar's status, yeah, that, looks, that starts to look good again. But Justin Fields is not that. People are going to be on Justin Fields to a certain extent. I don't think that from a mobility standpoint and the way that they run this offense, it's not yet fit to like how Baltimore and Lamar and Tyler Huntley's fit to that type of a quarterback. This offense is just not fit there yet for Chicago, especially that offensive line. So Justin Fields at 5,200, I guess, my guess is that with this COVID stuff, every other position is going to open up with value plays. We don't have to get a value quarterback this week. We can just pay up for the studs that can give us a secure 20 to 25 points at quarterback, find a nice stack there, maybe a little bit of a leverage like Tampa Bay or maybe even Minnesota, and we can try and find value somewhere else. So like Fields would be the one punt play. Lawrence is still on this list, but it's not looking good. The Jets can maybe bump that up. So Fields would be the one punt play outside of Burrow in the 5K range, but I don't think we have to really pay down all that much. Like this range looks good up top. There's reasons why like a Tom Brady and a Justin Herbert and a Mahomes and a Matthew Stafford, all averaging 23 to 25 DraftKings points per game. They stand out and they stand out for good reason. Next up, we will transition into the running back position. And as of this recording right now, Austin Eckler has been put on the COVID list early in the week. Maybe there's a chance he returns. I mean, it is one of the best spots, a nine point favorite against Houston. One of the worst defensive lines in the league right now, Houston, at least their defensive line, their pressure rating has gotten a little bit better, but still ranked 28th in run defense right now and run grades according to the pro football focus. So yeah, I mean, Austin Eckler has some status there concerns. So right now it's kind of a wait and see. Justin Jackson. Jackson, Joshua Kelly would fill in. Justin Jackson saw the majority of the workload. He didn't fumble on the goal line like Joshua Kelly. He has more versatility. He's a niftier back, more elusiveness, better pass catcher. He's only 4,200 this week. Expect him to be the beginning of the week chalk, potentially the chalk all week long, depending on else what happens. I think he's a good play at 4,200. Like it's a different story when uh, James Robinson plays for the Jaguars in a terrible offense and he's in the 5K range. It's a totally different story when you're a massive favorite attached to Justin Herbert and a smart coaching staff as big favorites against Houston and your 4,200s like Justin Jackson. So that's just a plug and play probably 100% of your lineups, assuming no other crazy stuff comes out. And it makes you, gives you the ability to pay up for a Dalvin Cook. Now he'll be facing the number one run defense in the NFL in the Rams right now. Welcome back to the in post trying to make up for all the news that's coming out. Dalvin Cook was just placed in the COVID list, not vaccinated, definitely going to miss 
Madison Wednesday comes off the COVID list, so he's going to be in line, and he is going to be the chalk now because we already don't have running back options in this range, right, in this range at all because of some injuries, because of other guys like Austin Eckler on the COVID list, and it's a bare range. So now Madison at $6,800, even though that's the most expensive we've seen him basically for the season. I mean, this is a dude who in his three starts has had 26 fantasy points, has had 29 fantasy points. And the most recent start was a bad start for him. And he ended up still getting 24.4 fantasy points when Dalvin Cook is missed. So I think Madison is solid. Like you're playing cash, you got to go there. But I do think that some of the players that we're going to continue to talk about as we go through this look like even better leverage plays now, you have Joe Mixon practicing in full as the week has gone on. That's great. He's right there in the pricing. So is Cordell Patterson and Madison stuck in between them. So I think there's going to be in a really good matchup for, for Patterson with his routes coming up. Less ownership there. Less ownership now on Mixon. I think Madison just secures so much of that ownership, maybe 30 40% in some contests. Again, he is fine to get to. He has been hammering at home. He's been good. But if you just want to pivot to a guy who's going to be a third of the ownership, those other guys right there, Mixon and, and and probably Patterson, will be that for you. So now, if at any point we talk about, compared to the upper-end wide receivers, like Dalvin Cook's price tag just in passing, just know that that was obviously shot before this edit is being put in. And I'm going to be honest with you, I question Najee, Har Najee Harris's ceiling, not only because of last week, but just this offense doesn't move the ball. Their team total, yet again, just stinks this week. Pittsburgh is not a team that I want to rely on to score multiple touchdowns in a game, let alone Najee Harris to have that multiple touchdown game that gives him the 30-plus point upside. So I question his upside. So Dalvin and Cook just kind of becomes a, a pay up to get different and leverage the slate by position at $8,300 in a nice game environment and a decent team total, even as an underdog, where the pass catching role should come out more. So, yes, track Leonard Fournette and Joe Mixon's status is right now because I'll be interested in both of those dudes if they're active, but they're dealing with injuries and injuries that are not good for running backs like ankle sprains is definitely going to keep Mixon, I assume, out at least one week if it's an actual ankle sprain, as reported, and a hamstring right now for Leonard Fournette, which is usually a week to week thing. It's not looking good right there. So, their backups start to come into play. Samaji P. Ryan, Chris Evans for Cincinnati, for Tampa Bay, Keyshawn Vaughn, and more so Ronald Jones, who don't have anywhere near the same skill sets as a Fournette and a Joe Mixon. I mean, Chris Evans, to an extent, the Michigan rookie for Cincinnati. So I think that when you're looking up here, like it's really just Dalvin Cook. And the reason why I like Cordell Patterson this week is because he's facing Detroit. Detroit that they've been getting healthier on defense, but the run defense still ranks 31st right now. Their tackling unit is a bottom five tackling unit. So Cordell Patterson, the thing that I liked this past week, last week you ended up seeing, two weeks ago he only ran 11 routes. This past week he's back up to 23 routes run he's still seeing a lot of carries on the ground and now he gets this really beneficial matchup and he's priced in a situation where I think people start to lean a little bit more towards even though there's guys around him banged up they start to lean a little bit more towards if we scroll down a Saquon Barkley a Javante Williams a Josh Jacobs who continues to catch passes a James Robinson will soak up all of the ownership for $800 less because everybody and their mother played James Robinson wrongfully in my opinion at 40% ownership last week and now he gets the motherfucking Jets now he actually gets a situation where the Jacksonville Jaguars are favored it in a game and he gets the motherfucking Jets. I think he looks good, but we have to see what the ownership is. I am much more likely to pay up for Dalvin Cook and punt to a Justin Jackson or another punt running back due to COVID news than I'm going to get to James Robinson, especially if we see James Robinson again at 20 to 25% owned. Check the Patreon projections later in the week. So I think that Cordell Patterson is a great leverage play this week. I don't think anybody ends up in the $6,700 range. They're going to pay all the way up to Dalvin Cook or they're going to stick in the mid range and the cheap range. They're not going to fall in this range of $6,700 Cordell Patterson. And if they do, if they do, I think they end up finding Saquon at 6,500. So I like Patterson as just strictly a game theory leverage play. I think similar things can be said for Clyde Edwards Hilaire at 5,800. I mean, Clyde Edwards Hilaire saw a great role, right? I mean, a fantastic role this past week. Very quietly, he saw a fantastic role. He played 70% of the snaps, ran 30 routes, ended up seeing 13 opportunities to the backfield use of just five opportunities for Daryl Williams. So 13 of the 18 running back opportunities, uh, fullback caught two balls in that game as well. But he saw 70% of the snaps. He was running all the routes. And now if they're down Travis Kelsey, who's a short to intermediate range guy, I think we might be able to see Clyde Edwards Hilaire in an offense that is projected to score four touchdowns, get some good usage here. And at $5,800, all the ownership is going to James Robinson. It is not even going to be close. It's all going to James Robinson, or it's all even going to drop down and go to David Montgomery, who continues to find himself seeing these 80 to 85% share of opportunities. And there's nothing wrong with David Montgomery or James Robinson, depending on your total lineup ownership. I just think that a very similar play for much less ownership and insane leverage for a similar ceiling is Clyde Edwards Hilaire in a much better offense uh, compared to Chicago and compared to Jacksonville. So give me the Cordell Pattersons and the Clyde Edwards Hilaire's as leverage. If I'm going to eat chalk somewhere, like James Robinson, probably going to be chalk. David Montgomery, decent ownership, 14, 15%, I assume. If I'm going to eat chalk somewhere, I'll just go all the way up to the guy who I really trust, who's going to see 25 to 30 touches and look good out there, both in the ground and in the receiving game in a healthy Dalvin Cook. 
as you start to get into this 5K range more, a lot of murky statuses. A Miles Sanders in, in a fine spot, although it's going to be potentially three-headed running backs. Jalen Hurts still there, but Sanders hit or miss on the production. Lately, it's been okay, but we'll have to see what ends up happening there. And then it's kind of a bare 5K range. Like, it's a lot of split backfields. It's potentially Rashad Penny coming off of a week on a two-game slate of being highly owned. If people go back, I'm not sure. Even more split backfields. Michael Carter was in like a three-headed backfield. Austin Walter saw some work, mainly a split. Devonta Freeman, he was in a pretty close split with Davius Murray, who actually out carried him seven to six. Devin Singletary is the one guy down here, like outside of all these COVID guys who are going to pop up. Um, Devin Singletary stands out as somebody who, look, I don't I don't really think they're going to go back to a situation where they full on run the ball with Devin Singletary, but he did play 93% of the snaps, right? 93% of the snaps and saw 23 of the 24 running back opportunities. Matt Breida only saw one carry. He ran 27 routes. Devin Singletary uh, ran a route on 27 of 39 dropbacks, so it's 70% rate alone. So he looks good for the usage that he was seeing in an offense that's going to score touchdowns. The problem is, is that consistent they throw so much in the red zone at this point it could be fluky at the exact same price point you'll have ronald jones we'll have to track the status he's only in play if leonard Fournette is out but he's kind of already priced for it a 5100 dollars ronald jones and a matchup against carolina's defensive front that's not bad at all for an offense that likes to throw the ball and ronald jones just isn't the pass catching running back now giovanni bernard is already out for the year so do they just go with ronald jones or do they go to Keyshawn vaughn the second year player we'll have to see what happens with Fournette. if he's out i think ronald jones likely picks up more ownership than he should that being said though this is an offense that should should get into the red zone, should get by the goal line, could vulture some touchdowns, but I do think it'll be a little bit higher on than it should. If you scroll down more, it becomes a kind of bare 4K range until you start to get to the lower range. Craig Reynolds is here. Track Jamal Williams should come back from COVID. I don't know why you would take the ball out of Craig Reynolds' hands from Kutztown. A lot of people are saying Kutztown. It's Kutztown. I'm not sure what's going on there, but $4,500. It's not a great spot for Detroit, but the matchup against Atlanta's defensive line is a fine spot. Overall, though, their offense with Jared Goff potentially in the COVID list now, I, I don't know how there's really any upside here for them to move the ball. So he's not a priority. The priorities would be like a $4,000 Joshua Kelly, but more so Justin Jackson at 4,200, right? And I know more COVID stuff is going to come out. So you might just see me do a full on screen grab for my phone of updating you there. But yes, this is going to be the full on Justin Jackson show. I mean, you saw 53% of the snaps on Thursday night football against the Chiefs when Eckler was limited to just 34% of the snaps. In that game, he ended up running 22 routes. He saw a target and he had 13 carries for 86 yards and he looked good, right? Compared to Joshua Kelly, who played 16% of the snaps, fumbled on the goal line, saw zero targets it's on four routes. I mean, he kind of got benched in that game, of course, and maybe they even played Eckler more than they wanted to. But if Eckler was to miss because of the COVID list, if, if, if Eckler's in, ignore this, and Eckler up top price right next to Dalvin Cook, I'd probably lean to go to Eckler there. More ownership would be off of him because of the foggy status of the COVID stuff. But if he does indeed miss and doesn't come back in this five-day stretch that he has, Justin Jackson at $4,200 right now without any other news, I mean, scream, scream, screams 100% of your lineups. And as we keep going in this video, the wide receivers, uh, tight ends, other positions, I want to let you know about the offer that is only lasting this week. So maybe you're watching this on Saturday or Sunday. It's lasting until the end of this week, this week 16. You get not only a $100 bet for free if you use the code CLASS, that is C-L-A-S-S -S on prize picks, not only a $100 bet for free on prize picks, a player prop site, you take the over-under on player props. You also get the DFS course that I have that is a $100 course. You can go buy it on Teachable or you can get it for free with that code through prize picks. 10 plus hours of video a bunch of downloadables on DFS strategy, on game theory of DFS, how to think like a pro, stop using your emotions as much, and just a little tricks that can help you along the way. A bunch of people are getting in there and taking advantage of it. You should be the next one as well using the code CLASH. You'll get it for free. Email to you. If you go to pricepicks.com, your first deposit, use the code CLASH. You get a $100 bet and you get that class for free. That being said, now let's transition to the next position here. And that's going to be a much more difficult position to filter out because it's a lot more guys on the slate a lot of wonky things are going on with COVID list statuses on these guys. So up top right now, we'll have to track the status of this team because they've been in and out of the, the COVID protocols a bunch. Well, we hope that nothing happens to Mr. Cooper Cup. I've been saying it every week. I keep taking the over 88 and a half receiving yards on prize picks and only one time it has failed us so far this season. I'm recording this before the, the Seattle week 15 game. So we'll see there. Hopefully he hits it yet again for us, but the matchup against Minnesota in the best game environment, we'll see what his ownership comes in at. Like if it's like a 40% Cooper Cup, that's when you can start to question it. But if it's only in the 20 to 25 percent range where it is most weeks i think it's completely fine because the dude projects out for 25 fantasy points and nobody else is even around him in the fantasy point department so it's okay for that now tyree kill i mentioned really only single stacking him this week i mean he's a decent like one-off in single entries as i think jefferson cooper cup and keenan allen in their game environments and maybe even their quarterbacks pick up a little bit more ownership so tyree starts to become a obvious single stack with mahomes and really just like a single entry play only for me probably not a cash type of play rather go up to cooper cup rather go down to like a stefan or to a keenan 
Keenan Allen. So if I had to rank these guys, let's just say above $7,000 this week at the wide receiver position, assuming that Mike Evans doesn't play. And the more that I think about it, the more that I think Tyreek is going to go very low on sandwiched in between Keenan Allen, who's consistent, Jefferson in a good game environment, and Cooper Cup, who is obviously who he is. So I think that Tyreek Hill, if there's a way you can play both Cup and Tyreek Hill this week and get a couple of cheap guys, a punt tight end, a punt defense, and a cheap running back, and maybe another cheap receiver, if stuff opens up with COVID, I think a really interesting way to play the slate is Tyreek and Cup becomes hard, obviously, to play Dalvin Cook at that point, but I think you pay down a running back to the mid-range or low range. That might be the way to go. Get those secure, cheap touches in a Justin Jackson and a Cup and Tyreek build because I think Tyreek is going to be low enough owned in this price range, especially at the exact same price, basically, as Dalvin Cook, who soaks that up. I think he's going to be a nice leverage play, and if Kelsey ends up missing, even better. And when we're talking about some of these guys up top, obviously, I'm recording this in post a little bit now, so Tyreek is not going to play. So your other options would be you know, pairing all the way up top, go up top, snag a guy, and, and pair him potentially, if you're looking at this slate, pair that Cooper Cup and, and pair him with Justin Jefferson, right, in that game environment. Pair him with Keenan Allen. Pair him with Jamar Chase, who might be lower owned this week. So now that Tyreek might not be an option for us, we'll see if he can get back doesn't seem likely. Those are some other guys that you can pair him up with. The above 7K range, the only other guy who kind of stands out is like Deontay Johnson. Again, how often he's a run back if you want to go for it in those stacks. I think I'd rather just go down in the price tag and, and try and find a tight end and Pat Frymuth, who is in the concussion protocol. If he ends up playing, I'd rather run it back there. You get touchdown upside in a lot of routes run. Uh, the $7,100 Jamar Chase, we already touched on it. If we scroll down, this range of T Higgins at his price tag is $6,200. $7,100 Jamar Chase off of a terrible week last week against Denver in a weird game environment. And now Joe Mixon's banged up. Much better matchup, divisional matchup against Baltimore, who they toasted earlier in the year. I think that Jam and Jamar Chase did with against Marlon Humphrey, who's now out in this game. I think that a really sneaky lower own 5% owned Joe Burrow probably this week. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins probably come in somewhere around 8% owned each. I prefer T. Higgins at the cheaper price tag as I don't think his ownership will be insane. Both of those guys stand out for me. Both of the Seattle guys that they're both out there and healthy and able to go stand out for me. I'll continue to just play the lower owned one, which I hope. We'll see what ends up happening on Tuesday Night Football. If Metcalf can pop off. If he pops off, I'll go lock it if he's lower owned but we'll see that they're at a very similar price tag compared to the seattle guys though i do prefer the cincinnati guys other than that brandon cooks adam thielen fine to have in groups not priorities for me once you start to get below 6k i mean guys like mike williams are fine in groups russell gage continues to be fine matchup against detroit though how often is detroit going to push the tempo in that game is a big question dj moore continues to see 10 targets now he's in another game like the quarterbacks continue to suck for him but he keeps seeing volume 10 targets last week he continues to not leave the field playing 69 of the 76 snaps running 40 routes last week cam newton is is still throwing his way whoever goes in there is throwing his way so he looks good in a run back at tampa like if you just wanted to go in this game if you wanted to play a game where it was brady gronk and antonio brown if he returns and if it's not antonio brown throw in tyler johnson and you double stack that one because brady is not mobile so you want to get those double stacks in there to hit the real high ceilings brady's gonna pay off when he throws touchdowns so you might as well get a couple of other guys in that lineup i'm completely fine to not run it back but if you wanted to run it back yeah i mean dj moore looks good robbie anderson who we'll get to is a little bit cheaper seeing volume lately but i'll take the athlete and dj moore who continues to command targets I'm on Ross St. Brown. He's a rookie. The price point's increasing. The target share looks good, but Jared Goff's in the concussion protocol, or not the COVID protocol, and that's a concern for me. Hollywood Brown, Tyler Huntley threw 14 times his way, 10 catches, only 40-something yards. Whoever's the quarterback in there, though, I think that, again, single stacks of Cincinnati. How does the game pop off? Well, the game pops off if you're scoring quick, and you score quick through Hollywood Brown. So say you played a Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase stack, or a Joe Burrow Higgins stack, I'd run it back first and foremost with Marquise Brown. And that's why he's a yes, because I think that that's a really nice leverage stack, and he gives you upside in that leverage stack uh, if you scroll down more we start to get down here and this lower 5k range the ones that stand out to me uh the 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 rams guys van jefferson continues to i continue to prefer odell who is just looking great the better player than van jefferson already has this connection with especially in the red zone matt stafford and he's a fair price tag i expect odell is going to pick up a lot of ownership at that price tag though because it's kind of a wasteland like elijah moore is banged up um i'm on our st brown as, as quarterback issues there and then it's just jumps down now from the upper 5k range to yeah darnell mooney's there and darnell mooney i think will be a decent level leverage play off of Odell Beckham. A uh, nice upside. Uh, looked really good with Andy Dalton. Unfortunately, won't have him. But I think that he's still in play as, as a guy who can go downfield, but a much better game environment, better player, better quarterback for Odell. And there's really nobody else to pivot to at this price range, right? Like you're looking at it, it would be Darnell. Other than that, like Kenny Galladay, yes, Sterling Shepard, he ends up getting hurt. He's going to tear his Achilles and miss the year. Tyler Boyd, Chase Claypool. It's kind of afterthoughts. Jerry Judy, Kendrick Bourne on the COVID list. Uh, not much upside out of a Jamison Crowder. So now you're down at that point into the 4K range. Not many pivot options other than Darnell Mooney off of Odell. So if you don't have a chalky lineup, I think it's okay to go to Odell. If you do and you're looking for leverage somewhere and you're kind of playing all the chalk this week, the chalk running backs, a chalk Cooper Cup, a potentially chalk Stafford, and you don't want to just get insane ownership everywhere, then you can pivot away from that. But I do think Odell at this price tag, the 
the dude projects out for like 13 and a half, 14 fantasy points. It looks good. To scroll down now to the 4K range, the top of the 4K range, Robbie Anderson stays in play because Tampa Bay runbacks primarily. Kadarius Tony is expected to be activated. He is the exact same price as Antonio Brown. He is also expected back. So you get these two $4,900 wide receivers that both look great. Like Antonio Brown is the one guy this week that I don't care what the ownership is. I know that they have out there Stephon Gilmore. That's a concern. He has looked good so far this year for Carolina. So he could potentially take away Antonio Brown. I'm not overly concerned though about it. Uh, Kadarius Toney going to be activated. No Sterling Shepard. Expect him to go right back into the slot, but going to have to play with likely Jake Fromm. They haven't made a decision as of this recording. That doesn't feel great. But both of these guys are $4,900. They just both stand out as great options here. And then you get Robbie, who's not going to be owned as the leverage. So this $4,900 range, Jacoby Myers keeps seeing usage. I question the upside there. It's a very strong range at $4,900 on this slate. Same price principle from that DFS course, which if you use the code CLASH, you get the $300 bet and that DFS course. If you see these dudes in the $4,900 range, one of them is likely to soak up all the ownership. I expect that guy to be the guy attached to Tom Brady with a good projection and no other wide receivers out there and Antonio Brown. So you're naturally going to get a lower ownership number than you should because they're the same price as Brown on Kadarius Toney, Jacoby Myers, and Robbie Anderson. I think that if you're going to leverage off of Brown, which I'm not looking to right now in a lot of lineups, but if you were going to, it would be Kadarius Toney for me. Gabe Davis scored a fourth and two touchdowns to have two touchdowns last week. Much tougher matchup this week. He's now more expensive than Cole Beasley. I'll prefer Beasley in my opinion. And as we were finishing up the receivers there, as I'm editing this in post, Cole Beasley is now out for 10 days. He is not vaccinated and he was put on the COVID list. So who's going to fill in for Cole Beasley? It'll be Gabe Davis and Steph Diggs on the outside. Who they have less, they have Jay Kumaru, so they could move Steph Diggs into the slot, put Kumaru, a bigger receiver on the outside. Isaiah McKenzie is the most likely slot replacement, one for one. He's been involved in this offense on end around, special teams, punt return, or sometimes run some routes. He's athletic, he is dynamic, so he'll fill that role. But I also think that you'll see a decent role intake upwards for Dawson Knox to get in the slot a lot more. So role changes for Isaiah McKenzie, maybe Jay Kumaru. They have a depth receiver, and Marcus Stevenson kind of operates on the outside as a burner. Don't think he'll see run. But the biggest changes are probably Isaiah McKenzie will start and then also Dawson Knox the tight end. Rashad Bateman is going to be somebody who ran the most routes, played the most snaps last week, just didn't get much usage with Tyler Huntley. It was all Marquise Brown. It was all Mark Andrews. So now Rashad Bateman, if there's no Sammy Watkins, who was on the COVID week last, list last week, should still see a lot of usage. If Watkins is out there, I'm just not going to get there. Last week was the week for Marvin Jones for me. He didn't get us there. Now we'll get the Jets. Just watch him pop off this week, right? The flop leg. It's still a good matchup, but that whole entire offense continues to struggle. Low 4K range, Allen Robinson. Where have we gone? $4,000 flat Allen Robinson off and not playing last week. Just insane, insane, insane how low he is right now. Tyler Johnson will fill in for Chris Godwin and only get an even more important role depending on the Mike Evans, Brashad Perriman, Antonio Brown statuses. So Johnson at $3,900 makes sense. It's so easy to play Brady that if we get some ownership leverage on him, I mean, yeah, Gronk's 6200 but that's a secure play. Uh, $3,900 Tyler Johnson is a secure play for his routes run out of the slot, which has been the target this week in the last month since they've been seeing two high safeties for Chris Godwin. And then potentially you get a cheap Antonio Brown. So just so easy easy to stack up Tampa Bay. The runbacks on Carolina are also cheap. So that looks good. And then some other Tampa Bay guys like Scotty Miller at $3,500. Laquan Treadwell, I put out a tweet. He's leading this team in targets over the last month with 28. And now he gets the Jets. I'm not too sure I love that, but it's something if you're looking for a punt play. Only other things worth mentioning as of this recording, Pharaoh Cooper for the Giants. If Kadarius Tony was not to be able to designate to or come back, he's designated to return. He's not officially on the active roster. Well, Cooper should operate out of the slot and Jake Fromm targeted him three times on that final drive. But that's probably not going to be needed if Tony returns. He'll probably end up being a no. Other than that, Jalen Darden, the rookie, I believe seventh round rookie, he'll only be in play if Mike Evans was to miss and guys like Antonio Brown didn't return. Because either way, Darden's more of a slot guy. So if you put Tyler Johnson in the slot, you're going to end up putting on the outside Scotty Miller for sure. And then if Perriman and Antonio Brown were to return, Antonio Brown on the other outside, Perriman will bump in front of Miller. So the slot's already pretty secure, which makes it hard to see Darden seeing any legit usage, assuming we get one of Antonio Brown or Perriman to return in this game. So that's where wide receiver is. Again, a lot of it, I think it's a really interesting build to get two stud wide receivers. I prefer Tyreek and Cup because of their ceilings and their security and their quarterbacks attached to them, game environment, matchups, all that. But getting two of those guys, if you can, I think that's an interesting way to play this slate. And now with all that said, we're going to go to the final position here, and that is going to be the tight end position. Kelsey's in the COVID protocol. I, I prefer just Tyreek if you're stacking that. I know Kelsey went off on the showdown slate. We were all over him. He was my highest on captain. We profited nicely. It was a good time. Mark Andrews had a great time, and he's the number one scoring tight end this year in fantasy had another great game last week multiple touchdowns 100 yard game Packers cannot defend him totally different matchup now though and he's priced up to 7k so I probably don't see myself getting to these 7k tight ends I prefer Rob Gronkowski with guys out for Tampa Bay this range right here of Pitts Waller and Gronk looks fantastic I mean Pitts 
matchup, there is nobody on Detroit that will even stand the chance at guarding Pitts, not even any cornerbacks either. So the problem with Pitts has been he struggled with cornerbacks. Last week, he didn't see that great of a cornerback. This week, he's not going to see any good cornerbacks. I think Pitts starts to stand out a little bit more. If and when Darren Waller returns, his price has been dropping because he's been out due to injury, not due to performance. Waller's just an automatic smash at $6,000 if he's in. As of right now, if Waller was to return, I would prefer right now Waller Gronk and Pitts in that order in this range. And then it's a lot of tight ends who I'm just putting in like a Dawson Knox if I'm playing Buffalo guys or running back New England. You scroll down more, Pat Frymuth had four catches for like almost 40 yards right after the half and then he ended up sustaining a concussion. Track his status. He is my probably favorite uh, single stack or just bring back option in Kansas City. A Tyreek and you don't even have to go Mahomes. A Tyreek and a Pat, Pat Frymuth to have a, a run back option there. That looks good. His price point drops $200 since last week. Ebron still on IR, still getting all the red zone usage, still running all the routes. It seems like Big Ben really trusts him on the underneath stuff, especially in the two-minute offense. So Pat Frymuth stands out if he's able to return. Conklin in, in just stacks of that game environment, not a priority, but if he finishes up your stack, that's fine. I prefer Tyler Higby on the opposite side, who's $100 cheaper, who continues to run 35 to 40 routes at the tight end position lately. He has a good game environment. He's going to run a lot out of the slot. So I like Tyler Higby there at $3,800. I would prefer Pat Frymuth if you're looking for a one-off, but Higby over Conklin in that game environment. And then a lot of other guys like a Jared Cook, especially with Parm banged up and unlikely to, to play after that scary hit. He should maybe see, instead of 20 routes run, closer to like 25 to 30 routes run in a fine matchup if you want to put him in your stacks. Um, other than that, it's just punts like James O'Shaughnessy. I question the upside. If you're looking to punt the position, I mean, at least Tommy Tremble is out there running a lot of routes now. The rookie is starting to take over for the routes. He ran 28 routes, only led to three targets, but a about double the routes as Ian Thomas. If you go down a little bit more, Brevin Jordan didn't play in that last game. Brevin Jordan for Houston ended up having a hand injury, so track that status. It wasn't widely reported, so that's somewhat of a concern. And the last thing, Tyler Croft quietly returned to the Jets last week, and Zach Wilson immediately looked his way. He played the most snaps at tight end with 36 snaps, first time playing in over a month. He ended up running 18 routes, which is not great, but it was 11 more than any other tight end, and it led to two targets, two catches, 35 yards. This is if you're looking to punt. I'm honestly not looking to punt this low. Where I want to stay at the tight end position this week, and if you want to punt this low that's fine you just have to hope for a, a, a like a brevin jordan two weeks ago touchdown right something that luck locks is your way but i'm honestly looking to find and foster moreau if there's no continues to be no darren waller is a fine play but i'm probably going to stay in this pat fryermuth tyler conkling higby range or if I find the extra money, the Pitts, Walder, and Gronk range. Those are the two ranges I'm looking to go to, barring any COVID news. Travis Kelsey being out does open up the uh, po possibility of a Blake Bell or a Noah Gray. Noah Gray, the rookie, is the priority there if you're choosing between the two. If Kelsey was to miss, I think that I would go to. I mean, Blake Bell's more of the veteran. He was on this the Kansas City team. Then he went to Dallas, and he came back to Kansas City, so he knows this offense. And Noah Gray is a rookie who's been in the offense, more talented player, probably a better pass catcher. I would lean to go Noah Gray, but we'll get news throughout the week on that. Maybe even more of them get put in the COVID protocol since they're a tight end in the tight end room and all that with Travis Kelsey, share lockers, whatever it might be. But for right now, that is where we're at. Again, it, when news is definitely going to break this week to make some running back plays look elite, like a Justin Jackson as of right now, and some wide receivers look fantastic, and some of the best plays are no longer on the slate, and all this wackiness is going to start to break out, and you start to get plays like Tyler Huntley last week and some other guys last second. I'm going to try and put out updates. Definitely follow me on Twitter, at SalvageUDFS. All the updates on Patreon, all the tools over there will definitely be updated. I'll be in the Discord to answer questions, so be sure to get in there. And Sunday morning's Closing Thoughts podcast for Patreon-only members will be even more imperative. Last week, we said the best play on the slate, it's going to come down to Tua and Tyler Huntley. But if Huntley is indeed, if he is indeed playing, he's going to be the guy that we're going to. And that man just popped off for 30-plus points and was the optimal quarterback. Those are the types of things you got to be in on Patreon, especially these types of weeks, to get in on on Sunday morning's exclusive podcast. Other than that, though, we'll put in some edits to help you out with any news that comes out during the week. You all rock. Use that code CLASS to get the free bet and the free course on prizepicks.com. Code CLASS, C-L-A-S-S. -S. Before you go, hit the like and subscribe button. Helps that channel a bunch. And I'll see you all in the next one. Merry Christmas and a happy, happy new year. But I'll see you before the new year in some live streams. Maybe do some giveaways. Merry Christmas, everybody out there in the streets. Peace out, gang.